Hi, if you've ever spent time analysing an intermittent problem, you'll probably have found that uh, looking through network traces can be quite difficult. Uh, it takes some time just to find the point in the trace where the problem has occurred. Now a typical trick to get around that problem is to send a marker at the time the uh, symptom appears, at the time the user experiences the symptom. So let me just show you the, the basic idea. So here I've got a website. Um, I'm going to start this trace running and then we'll do some things on the site. This is running in a virtual environment, so it's a bit slow anyway. Uh, but this initial transaction is quite slow, so I think we'll take advantage there. Now, immediately after the slow transaction, what I can do is I can send a marker such as a ping. So I'm going to send a single ping. I'm going to send it with a distinctive length of 101 bytes and I'm going to send it to the web server. There we go. Now let's just roll on. So imagine that lots more things happen on the website after the problem has occurred. And of course that's creating more and more entries in the trace file. So we've uh, generated a fair bit of content there. So let's stop the trace file. Now, of course, I want to find where the problem occurred. So it's very quick and easy. I can do a find for an ICMP packet. And in fact, it's taken me to a, a, an echo request, a ping, as you can see. But in a live environment, you'll find that your systems are being pinged all the time by management systems. And so it's sometimes difficult to work out whether the ping that you've discovered in the trace is the correct one. Now by look, using a distinctive length, we can of course check to see, as we see here, that this was a ping of 101 bytes. And in fact, if we go again, I can actually include that in the filter. So I can say ICMP and and data dot len equals 101. And that takes me straight to the marker. So pings are a good way of doing this, but one of the problems is that if you're um, working with a user on a problem and maybe the problem only happens once every two or three days, that means we have to get the user to send a ping, which means providing them with access to the command box, which is not always uh, appropriate or even available due to policies, but it's not very user friendly. So at Advanced 7, for some time, we've been using um, a marker mechanism that was developed by uh, my colleague, Matthew York, and um, we've tidied it up a bit and we've decided to make it available to the Tribe Lab community. So let's take a look at that mechanism. I'm just going to uh, clear this. So we're back to square one with that. Let's get rid of the command box. And what we need to do is come into here and uh, to access the marker mechanism and you can do this quite freely right now. You can all try this as you watch this video. Um, you go to www.triblab0.com slash marker.html. So that's the URL. So we'll go there. And here we see the marker mechanism. Now, we can send a marker to any uh, website or web service, both internal and external. 
In fact, we can send a marker to any type of service whatsoever. So to a file server, to a database server, to um, anything that's TCP based. So let's have a look how this works. You can see here that we've set a URL and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. That's the default. I'm going to change it to send a marker to my, my university uh, sample site. And uh, I'm going to put some unique tex text in here. So let's say uh, Tribe Lab Demo. Okay, let's start the trace running. Go back into our website and let's do some work here. Generate some traffic. Now let's imagine at this point, the next action we take actually takes a long time to complete. So I'm just going to click on a button. So now I want to mark that particular interaction. So I come back to my trace marker and I simply press send marker. And we get the marker logged in the trace tool. But what we'll find is we'll also see a, a distinctive marker in the network traffic. But before we go looking for that, let's just generate some more traffic so that we make it slightly difficult for ourselves. Okay, that should be enough. Now we stop the trace. And let's go back and we start from here. And all we do is look for the string that I specified in the marker tool. So in the marker tool, you can see I specified TribeLab demo. So let's put that in. It's going to be a string. Um, we will find this string actually, in this case, we'll find the string in the packet list. In some cases, we'll only find it in the packet bytes, but let's just try this and uh, refocus. And here we find our marker packet. And you can see that it says TribeLab demo. And it's also got this query parameter here, m equals one. That's the marker number. And if I keep sending markers, you can see that the marker number just keeps increasing. And we can set the marker number using this seed value. So we could start the markers at 100 and we can then send more markers start it, starting at a different range. So this is a great tool. It's um, very popular in our customers and uh, I think you'll find it very useful when you're looking for intermittent problems. To find out more information, you need to go to the TribeLab site. Um, you can use the tool, as I said, you can use it right now. You'll get um, access to the uh, user manual, the user guide for this tool, and a number of demonstration videos that show you how to mark other um, traffic types. That's all available on the TribeLab site in the network trace capture section of the site. So I hope you find that useful and have fun with that. See you soon.